The competitive landscape for men at bodybuilding shows isn't nearly as convoluted as it is for women, but there's still plenty of uncertainty and confusion when it comes to picking the best category. So today, I'm gonna break down all the options and present you with a super simple flowchart to help you make the right decision. So without further ado, let's hit it. Guys, when it comes to competing, we kind of have it easy, at least compared to the women. We don't have to spend a ton of money every show on hair and makeup. We don't have to worry about jewelry and our suits typically cost about 35 bucks as opposed to several hundred at a minimum. We also only have half as many categories to choose from, which should make our decision easier, but there's still a lot of confusion out there as the categories available aren't necessarily delineated in a way that makes for a super obvious choice. Let's dive in and take a look at all the options, and we're gonna do this in more or less ascending order of muscularity and leanness. Keep in mind, the visual examples that I'm gonna show here are of the IFBB Olympia winners from last year. So very literally, these are the guys considered to be at the peak of the mountain in the world. It does not mean you have to look like this to be competitive, especially at your first show. This is just what we can safely consider to be the standard that someone in a specific category might wanna aim for. So let's get started. But first, a little history. The first competitive bodybuilding show was actually held at the Royal Albert Hall in London in 1901, organized by Eugene Sandow. Fun fact, one of the judges at that show, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, go figure. Women weren't involved in the, until the 1960s except as beauty pageant exhibitions as kind of a bonus sideshow at the men's events. So up until 2013, bodybuilding was the only category available. Yep, men's physique introduced in 2013 is barely 10 years old. Seems kind of hard to believe, doesn't it? Whatever your opinion is of men's physique now, there's no doubting that it's made a ton of money for promoters and has had a huge impact on making the sport and industry viable on a larger level as a whole. Classic physique was then introduced in 2016 with an aim towards bringing back a more old school aesthetic that focused less on pure size and more on shape and flow. Since then, however, there have been multiple increases to the weight cap for classic physique, which has been the main difference between it and bodybuilding. And so that's helping to kind of blur the lines between those two categories once again. As always, the reasoning behind these added categories has been financial. Show organizers and promoters and the governing bodies are always looking for ways to expand the sport, get more people competing in shows, which means more butts in seats buying tickets, and also in hopes of expanding bodybuilding beyond the micro niche it currently occupies as part of our broader culture. So all that being said, let's break down the specifics and the requirements of each category, starting with men's physique. The men's physique division, or MPD, it's considered the entry level category for men. It's often derisively referred to as men's bikini, but make no mistake about it. At most shows, and certainly at the national and pro levels, you had better be packing some pretty serious size and you better be walking on stage pretty damn peeled in order to be competitive. Men's physique does have a reputation for being less than the other categories, but really the goal here is the same. You know, getting feedback at shows like, you're too lean for men's physique isn't really a thing that happens. You just wanna be absolutely shredded here. The body fat expectations for all men's categories are within a couple percentage points of each other, realistically. What we're looking for in men's physique is pretty obvious. Big chest, big shoulders, narrow waist, wide lats, good thickness through the back. Arms should look proportionate, but there isn't a lot of opportunity in men's physique posing to show killer biceps or triceps, so strangely, there's just not much of an emphasis there. The elephant in the room, of course, would be leg development. It simply doesn't matter in men's physique because the stage attire consists of knee length board shorts. At the entry level for aspiring competitors, this is a huge leg up, no pun intended, as uh, building a quality set of wheels can be incredibly difficult and this removes a huge barrier to entry for a lot of guys who otherwise just wouldn't be able to compete in bodybuilding or now classic physique either. Uh, the reality is that once you get to a national level and beyond, all the guys have legs. You just can't find pro caliber athletes who slack on training much of anything, even if it's not a judged criteria for their category. And as such, we've seen a lot of crossover from men's physique to classic physique. Now on stage, we just have front and back poses here with a few possible variations on each pose. In some organizations, you're gonna see some very choreographed transitions between those poses, including a bunch of arm movements and such that I think frankly just look absolutely ridiculous. Just face the rear, and face the front without making a stupid dance out of it, please. 
please, I beg you. Some organizations like the OCB, they also use a side pose for men's physique, and I have seen this called out in NPC shows as well, in spite of the written guidelines for the category to the contrary, so be prepared. At the amateur level, men's physique is sorted out by height only. An exception to this, um, the IFBB announced in September 2023 um, that they're instituting weight caps for men's physique, which will be nine pounds under the classic physique weight caps at the same height. This seems fairly ridiculous and short-sighted to me, as it's not difficult at all to envision a scenario where someone turns pro in men's physique and then has to downsize to compete at the pro level or compete as a pro in classic physique instead. It's a stupid and spontaneously decided upon weight cap. It either needs to go away completely and just enact more strict judging standards and have those enforced to prevent competitors from getting too big or implemented universally at the amateur level as well so it's not newly introduced at the pro level. Okay, onward we go too. Classic physique. The big difference here between men's physique is twofold, but two branches of the same tree. Board shorts have been replaced with smaller posing trunks, which means that legs matter now. Realistically, if you're a men's physique competitor with good legs, you'll probably look reasonably at home doing classic physique as well. The posing is wildly different and closer to an old school bodybuilding presentation, but if you can learn those poses, your actual physique will likely translate over pretty well. Still, we're aiming to be as big as possible and as lean as possible here. Classic physique has an added level of complexity in that based on your height, there's also a weight cap that you have to be under now. This has the ability to add a lot of unneeded stress to prep as it's entirely possible that your height as measured at the show can be different from what you've measured at home or even how you've been measured in past shows. Being off on that by a quarter inch can mean as much as a nine pound swing in the weight cap, which can mean if you're close to the cap for your expected height, that you just can't compete or you have to cross over to either men's physique or bodybuilding or you can attempt to sweat that weight off over the matter of an hour or two but you're gonna have a bad time doing that on a short schedule so to be totally honest i would just try and slip the measuring dude 50 bucks to give you the quarter inch or whatever it is that you need amateur and professional organizations i think they really need to implement some kind of a height card where your official height can be locked in for a period of say five years so you don't have to sweat it and you know what your cap is going to be minus any wiggle room that can creep in from one measuring device or person to the next. Keep in mind that you're typically also weighing in around 5 p.m. or thereabouts the day before the show. So whatever you weigh in the morning, make sure you leave yourself room to eat and possibly carb up moderately throughout the day so that you can still make weight under the cap. On stage attire are classic physique posing trunks. These have more coverage than bodybuilding posing trunks and for some completely idiotic reason, are mandated that they have to be black. Why? Don't know. Someone had a reason. I'm sure it's stupid and it probably won't ever change. That's just the way it is. For posing, you'll be hitting your four quarter turns and five mandatory poses. Same as bodybuilding, but for some reason, again, probably a stupid one. There's no front or rear lat spread, no side tricep, and no most muscular pose. There's also a favorite classic physique pose where you can choose from several options. Personally, I find this to be a bit contrived, but it's fine. Uh, I'm not sure why they allow for some degree of self-expression there, but not in the wildly radical form of picking a non-black color for your posing trunks. There's an individual posing routine performed at finals, also set to music of your own choice and very free form in nature. If you can't tell, Classic physique is where I compete, so I have some slightly stronger opinions here as compared to other categories. Finally now, we come to bodybuilding. This is where it all started, and it's still considered to be the pinnacle of the sport today, even though you could make the argument that the most popular athletes might be competing in other categories. Bodybuilding is truly the category where you can never be too big or too lean, and honestly, the biggest freak will pretty much always win. There are plenty of cases throughout history where someone has enough muscle on their frame that they no longer really look proportionate or like everything fits on said frame, but they still win. Judges and the audience like the freaks. And if there's a legit freak on stage, then someone else needs to make a seriously compelling case as to why they should win over the freak. It rarely happens, aesthetics be damned. Judges have shown a repeated and consistent preference for size over aesthetics. Ideally, we're still looking for total body symmetry here. That means top to bottom, left to right, front to back, all in alignment with each other. Again though, I'd argue that these judging guidelines are more like suggestions and tend to only come into play really when attempting to split hairs between a couple of evenly matched guys on stage. Now on that stage, we're hitting the standard quarter turns plus eight mandatory poses. That's front and back double bicep, 
front and rear lat spread, side chest, side tricep, most muscular and abdominal thigh. Posing trunks are the least amount of coverage and smartly, all colors are allowed. Competitors here will perform an individual posing routine set to music of their own choice. Again, at most shows, this is unscored and will be about 60 seconds in length. Classes are determined here by weight only. We have bantam weight, lightweight, middleweight, light heavyweight, heavyweight, and super heavyweight for those over 225 pounds. So the real question here is where might you fit? I think there's a very, very easy and simple two-step process that isn't gonna always land you in the best category, but likely will in all cases except for one, which we'll cover right after this. So step one, do you have legs? If so, proceed to step two. If not, men's physique is your category. Now, having legs can be something of an open question, but what you're really after here are legs that look proportionate to your upper body. Generally, you're going to know this, and if you don't, ask your coach. Don't have a coach? Hire one. And if you're in need of a coach, hey, that's what I do. It's what I actually do full time. Uh, you can check out the link in the description to read about my coaching program, get an idea for what it's like to have me as your coach and reach out to me with any questions to see if we might be a good fit. Okay, but now step two, you have legs, but are you going to struggle to get under the weight cap for classic physique? If so, bodybuilding is calling you. Now, keep in mind just how lean you have to be in order to be competitive. Getting under that cap isn't going to be a problem for most guys if you get lean enough to be competitive. But if you're really packing a lot of size on your frame for your height, then it's entirely possible classic physique might just be too limiting. I will say, if there is a step three in this process, it's that you need to let your preference have a say in the matter as well. For example, if you don't have strong legs, but you really just don't like the idea of board shorts and men's physique posing, then there's nothing stopping you from doing classic physique. Just understand your limitations going in and aim to improve your legs to make yourself more competitive in that category over time. Or if you just really like bodybuilding, even though maybe you're undersized, that doesn't have to mean a hard stop and that you can't consider it. I did a show a couple weeks ago and I guess that most of the bodybuilders in that amateur NPC show would have easily fallen under the weight cap for classic physique. They just prefer to do bodybuilding instead and that's fine. There's nothing in the rules that gets in the way of letting your preference be part of the decision-making process. So there you have it. All the men's categories broken down. Hopefully this clears the air a bit and provides some answers. Figuring out where you belong in the big picture can be kind of tough. So don't forget to hit the link in the description to read about my coaching program. You can contact me directly from there for more information if you want it. And as always, please be kind, be disciplined, and work hard.